Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Malvern Hill, located in Henrico County, Virginia, on July 1st, 1862. On July 1st, suffering from several setbacks and defeats, U.S. General McClellan prepared for another large battle against Confederate forces. Both sides combined numbered about 160,000 men as he began to battle at Malvern Hill, where McClellan would make a final stand before retreating to the Union Navy's position at the James River. This was the first time the entire Union Army had been together in this campaign. Malvern Hill is naturally a defensive position sitting more on a plateau than a hill. It is over 100 feet high and over a mile long. The surrounding creeks enabled to act as a natural bulwark against an attack. On this location, more than 80,000 Union soldiers had set up and awaited a Confederate attack. Lee disregarded Confederate Major General Daniel Harvey Hill's warning to not attack such a well-defended position. With almost 250 artillery pieces under the Union command, it would make a slaughter field. Lee continued to move his Confederate soldiers up nonetheless. Once again in this battle, the Confederate command could not seem to get together their forces. Confederate Major General John B. Magruder was sent away from the battle with his six brigades and did not come back until it was too late. General Lee believed their use of artillery on two different hills, along with an infantry assault, would be enough to overturn the defensive situation of the Union. As this plan was being implemented, Union artillery successfully destroyed a vast swath of Confederate artillery and much of the remaining Confederate artillery was unable to reach their destination. However, General Lee never changed his battle plan with this new information concerning their lack of artillery support for his forces. It was during this time that Confederate forces had engaged Union skirmishers and were starting to take losses. As the battle cries could be heard by the Confederate command, other units assumed a Confederate attack was underway and began their own attacks. Upon Magruder's return, Lee ordered General John B. Magruder to attack, and unfortunately, Magruder, wanting to make up for his errors earlier, immediately moved forward even though not all of his troops had arrived. In addition, other large elements of the Confederate infantry had not begun their attacks, leaving Magruder undermanned as he began to receive deadly fire from the Union lines. Meanwhile, Confederate Commander D.H. Hill heard the fighting and believed this was the original signal to attack and started his own assault. Hill's men were hit by Union artillery using canister shot, turning Union cannons into giant shotguns that had Hill's men caught out in a wheat field. Even with that, some members of the Confederate infantry, namely the 3rd Alabama Infantry, got within 200 yards of the Union line, but found they were pushed back by the heavy Union infantry fire. Magruder had better luck getting to within 100 yards by crawling on the ground, and General Robert Ransom's brigade got within 30 yards before being driven off. However, these smaller defeats did not deter the Confederate Army who continued multiple uncoordinated attacks at the same time. As night fell, Confederate forces pulled back defeated, losing more than 5,700 men killed, wounded, or captured, while the Union themselves had only lost about 3,000 men that were killed, wounded, or captured. Even with the Confederate defeat, though, General McClellan retreated with his Union forces and his invasion of Richmond had been stopped for good. This campaign had just been a precursor of what was to come. Please join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.